Hi there, friends. I'm Eric Harrison, and I'm back again today with another video in support of an interview I just finished with Authority Magazine. This time around, they talked to me and interviewed me about second chapters and how I reinvented myself in the second chapter of my life. And it's really a great interview, um, and spoiler alert, I'm still reinventing myself every day, so as I know you are too. But the real question that they asked me and the purpose of this video is to share my five things I wish someone would have told me before I started leading my organization. Now, whether you're leading your organization now, desiring to become a leader in your organization, or maybe like me, you're considering a new side hustle, or maybe completely redefining your life with a new second chapter. I believe these five ideas will apply to all of those situations. I'll explain why as we jump in and answer these five questions. Okay, so I'm gonna jump right in, but just real quick before I do, let me say that uh, these five things I wish someone had, would have told me, there's five million things I wish someone would have told me, and I wish I knew many years ago that I know now, and I continue to learn. But the great thing, or the reason I picked these five things, and it was hard to narrow down, but these are principles that apply no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing. A friend of mine said to me yesterday, and I think it summarizes it really well. Business changes, circumstances change, people don't change. And so I believe if you'll apply these five things that you will be the kind of person, no matter what you're doing, no matter what stage you're in in your business, these will help serve you. So here we go. Number one, find and hire people who are smarter than you are. Okay, so all of these may seem very, you may have a tendency to think, well, sure, that makes sense. But I grew up <clears throat> and I was taught that I had to have all the answers. And I put so much pressure on myself to have the right answers all the time. Uh, the business that I ran for many, many years, I created a ton of stress for myself because for many years, I thought I had to be Moses coming down from the mountain with all of the answers and people would come to me and I would be able to dispense information. But here's the truth. There's a lot of smart people in the world and your job is gonna get a whole lot easier and you're gonna create a whole lot of margin in your life if you hire people smarter than you are because not only are you going to benefit from how they can help you, and, and you want to obviously hire people that are good at what you are not good at so that everybody is working in their so-called zone of genius. But, you know, I can't emphasize enough that as you grow, as you add people, as you build your business, Hire people smarter than you because they will challenge you and they will help you to grow your business in a much more robust way than you ever could by yourself. Because guess what? With a lot of counsel and with a lot of working together with people, you create a bigger pie for everybody. The only thing you do by trying to control everything yourself is you limit how big that pie can get. So build a bigger pie. Hire people smarter than you are. Number two, learn how to ask great questions and then listen for the answers. Now, again, you could take this and say, well, sure, Eric, everybody knows that. And, and they do, but so few people do it. Are you asking questions that are really getting to the heart of the matter? Are you seeking to find a deeper understanding of the answer to a problem or the solution to something that you're stuck on? The best way when you're talking to people, and it could be 
your employees, it could be your customers, it could be your suppliers. Ask great questions and, and don't just be happy with the first answer you get. Keep digging in. If somebody gives you an answer, ask them, well, okay, well, explain that to me a little more. You know, I, I read uh, uh, about asking questions and, and the simplest question in the world to ask when somebody gives you an answer is, what else? What else? What else? And you, it may be uncomfortable at first, and yes, it, it, people may even look at you funny, but the deeper you dig, the more you're gonna draw out, the better solutions you're gonna come up with. Now, it's also key that when you do this, you have to be a good listener. You need to take notes. You need to write down what people say and then repeat back to them what they've said to make sure that you have an understanding with them, that you're on the same page, okay? So ask great questions and listen. And I promise you, this is a skill that I am continuing to develop even today. So work on that. All right, number three. It's uh, by an author and sales leader that I follow quite a bit, uh, Jeffrey Gittimer. <clears throat> if you don't know him, it's Gittimer.com. I want to give all credit to him for this, but it's so true. He says, people hate to be sold, but they love to buy. Okay, again, when I grew up in business, we were all about, you know, getting to the close and building to the close and finding the pain and, and you know, overcoming objections and that just feels so heavy handed. And we've all been there. You know, when you get yourself in a situation and somebody's trying to close you or they're trying to sell you and it just feels gross, right? I mean, you just feel like you want to go take a shower after you're finished. And how do you feel if you end up do buy, if you do end up buying in that situation, you just, you have buyer's remorse. You're not excited about what you just committed your resources to. So here's the difference. The difference is you reach out to people. You get to know people. You understand what their problems are, what their uh, goals are, what their dreams are, because you you really need to flip the script and, and just get to know your audience and get to know, um, you know, what it is that they're struggling with. Because let me assure you, when you start to solve people's problems, when you give them solutions that make their life easier, when you've interacted with them and they tell you, this is what I need, and then you give it to them, they'll gladly pay you and they'll pay you well. But nobody wants to be sold to, but people love to buy. All right, number four, know who your audience is. This is so key. And I have to say that for many years, I, I was like, yeah, 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 know your audience. Sure, you know, who's my avatar? Who's I? Even when I went into the second chapter of my life and I started writing my book, I was coached. Who are you writing the book for? Who's the audience? And I have to be honest, I didn't take that seriously enough. And again, this is a skill that you can develop throughout your career. You have to dig in. You have, Again, you have to connect with people. You have to understand what it is that your audience wants and create a solution that they need. If you do that, you can build a successful business. And there's such a draw at least there was for me to say, I want, you know, I'm writing my book for everybody. I want everybody in the world to write my book. But here's the truth, friends. If you try to build something for everybody, you're going to attract no one. I've heard a saying over and over again the last couple of years, and it's so true. There's riches in the niches. So you need to niche down your business as much as you can. The smaller the niche, the more opportunity you have to create something where you find raving fans, even if it's only a handful of raving fans that will gladly pay you for your product. So niche down, know who your audience is. 
And the final thing is this. Life is best lived being successful in all of your roles. I'm an entrepreneur. I was a business owner. And for many, many years, I was married to my business. I really was. I, I lived it. You know, I would leave the office. I'd work, you know, long days. But I never left the office. I brought it home with me. And, and I know there's so many of you out there like that because I talk to you and I talk to people and they tell me, you know, you're, yeah, you're, you're doing so. You feel successful at work. But when you get home, you don't feel so successful. Friends, you've got to build balanced success in your life. It's the only way to live. And it took me doing a complete 180 degree flip on my life to figure this out. And so I'm doing this video, I'm doing these interviews, I'm doing all the things I'm doing, I'm writing, I'm speaking, I'm coaching, trying to help people recognize that, look, there's a better way. Yeah, you wanna work your hardest at your job, but you also wanna work your hardest at being a parent or a spouse. You wanna be in great physical condition. You wanna be in great mental condition. You wanna be in great spiritual condition. All of these things, that is the way to go through life. That is what success really looks like, is what I call balanced success. Success is not building this great company and making a ton of money and wrecking your life in every other area. My friend, success is being great at everything you do. And yes, you can do it. I am living proof. And if I can do it, so can you. So there you go. There's the five things I wish somebody would have told me before I started leading my organization. I'd love to hear what you think. Please comment below. I'll put a link to the interview in the show notes, and I hope this has helped you. I'd love to know, you know what you think, how you apply one of these five items, and how they have helped you. Thank you very much for watching. I invite you to check out all the videos on my channel, which are intended to help you discover your big why and to give you aims, actions, and attitudes that you can take today to start heading in that direction. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon in another video.